Namaskar. A couple of days ago, I had a conversation with Sriram Sishadri and we talked about Mr. PTR. Who is PTR? And he claims that he is an expert in economics. How is he an expert in economics? What kind of a financial background does he have? Because what happened was after this program aired, a good friend of mine called me up and said, do you really know what Mr. PTR did? Do you know that he is not at all having any degree in economics or finance or anything to do with banking? Well, that got me going. I said, wait a minute. Did I sing praises of somebody for uh, doing something that he's not? Well, I did not touch upon or neither I nor uh, Thiram Seshadri touched anything upon his educational qualifications and his educational background. So I decided to do a little bit of digging and you know it's not very difficult you can find everything you need and my friend was right this man has nothing to do with economics let's take a quick look at his background so you'll understand what he is what he has done thus far and what are his claims to fame here we go Payanivel Tyagarajan PhD in economics I think not so let's take a quick look at what he did thus far but before we do that, let's take a look at his family because he keeps talking about his grandfather being the chief minister of uh, Tamil Nadu, actually Madras presidency, we should say. And his grandfather, Ponnambalam Tyagarajan, PTR, Ponnambalam Tyagarajan, was chief minister from 4th April 1936 to 24th August 1936. Before him and after him, the chief minister was Mr. Bobbili Raja. So this was some sort of a justice party squabbles, internal squabbles. And I think he was like a placeholder that he said, okay, before we, while we sort this thing out, somebody needs to be the chief minister. So you be the chief minister. This is pre-independent India, 1936. So that's what happened. And of course, the British were propping up this justice party. So whatever happened, the British were inclined to just let it go. So that is the grandfather of Mr. Painivel Tyagaraja. Who is his father? PTR Painivel Tyagarajan. So this PTR that he takes as the first name or, or initials, this PTR as the initials that father of Painivel Tyagarajan takes, he's essentially taken his father's initials, Ponnambalam Tyagarajan. So his full name is Ponnambalam Tyagarajan Painivel Raja. That was his name. Now the son, the person that we are talking about, his name is Painivel Tyagarajan. I split up the Tyagarajan as two parts because it wouldn't fit into my nice chart. So this is the family tree. This man thinks that, you know, I'm too big to be a guy to be, you know, doing this. You have to just listen to some of his uh, tirades, you know, rants that go on in Tamil, sometimes in English too, about what, how great a person his grandfather was. Yeah, he was a chief minister. Yes. For a small amount of time. He didn't bring about, I mean, in that amount of time, you can't bring about any big changes or something that you can, you know, put your hat on. It's because I think he was trying to lay claim that he could be chief minister material also. First of all, you need to have no skeletons in your cupboard. What is the answer to that? Let's take a quick look at his educational qualifications. He got his um, engineering degree in chemical engineering from Regional Engineering College. There was a gentleman called Mani Sundaram. He was the one who was the first principal of the founding of the REC for several years and then he became a vice chancellor of a newly formed university. That's not important. But he got his bachelor's in chemical engineering. All right. Then after that, he came to United States, SUNY Buffalo, and he got his PhD in 1995. And this is in the field of operations research, not in finance, okay, operations research. And in that, the title of his PhD thesis was Individual Differences in Information Processing Implications for Interface Design. 1995, web hadn't come. The browser had just getting started. Mozilla, I think, was the one or maybe it was even before that there was something else, Netscape Navigator. I think that had just started sampling the, uh, you know, the companies and so on and so forth. So very, very early stages of web browser, graphical interface. So at that point of time, perhaps there was some research going on about, you know, how do you dialogue, design a dialog box? Where do you keep the OK? Do you keep it in the middle? Uh, like center of the box or do you keep it in the bottom do you keep it to the left do you keep it to the right okay yes yes no cancel all sorts of you know simple interface design this is what it appears to be for him 
the um, thesis for his PhD. I mean, <laughs> that sounds too good to be true, guys. How come Sony is giving out these kinds of PhDs? This is not even like a master's project. It's just very, very rudimentary stuff. And the, and the, the abstract goes on to claim that several people were uh, interviewed and data collected and so on and so forth. My two cents on this is that this essentially was like, you know, glorified interface design with how people interact with various interfaces. I mean, what are the other interfaces? I mean, you could add like, how about a mouse? Because, you know, mouse was just coming up. Maybe it was there for four or five years. People are still getting, then there's a joystick. There, there are other things like, uh, uh, you know, finger uh, touch pad and things like that. So essentially, this is not something that one would put your hat on and say that, okay, I've got a PhD in, uh, uh, in Stony uh, State University of New York. Sometimes, you know, people get wowed in India by sound, uh, by English, highfalutin English names, saying that I did this, I did that. And, and then if somebody can speak decent English, which Mr. Pranivel Tyagarajan does, so people immediately think that the man should know his stuff. I mean, being able to speak English and being able to be good at a topic are two totally different things. Don't confuse the two. I'm trying to kind of, again, you know, um, sift the grain from the chaff. This does not indicate any kind of, you know, um, uh, um, in, in knowledge in, in the finance industry, banking industry, or economics, none of that sort. In fact, you know, uh, what's his name? Raghuram Rajan RRR got an MBA from, I think, uh, some, some university, and he was no finance person. He had no idea of economics. And, and even he was trying to pass off for somebody who knew what he was doing as a governor of Reserve Bank. Yes. So these, these are the people that in you know, India usually gets, you know, carried away by these names. But the real gems, the real knowledgeable people, they don't tend to uh, make the best use of. Uh, it's an unfortunate fact. You know who I'm talking about. Okay. So this PhD in operation research has nothing to do with economics. I mean, if you think of a grid and you can posit, let's say three by three grid, that means there are nine positions. In nine positions, somebody wants to put an okay on the top left or the top, bottom right or in the middle. You know, you can't get a PhD for that. I, I, I really find fault with his advisor who gave him the PhD. This, this doesn't sound, you know, very, uh, very scientific. PhDs are given for something that is groundbreaking that nobody has thought of till that time and something that has value for humanity. I don't know. You make the decision. All right. So, okay, this PhD is published. How, what kind of a response did it get? You know, you go through and look at how it has been used since then. And this is the web download I got. So far, the publication count is two. Citation count is one. That means only one other person cited this research for their own work. I mean, if you have some groundbreaking stuff, you are going to have thousands of people building on your research, building and citing you, you know, I, I've got this from here and so on and so forth. So this is very, very, very modest record. Then he claims he got an MBA uh, from MIT Sloan School of Management in financial management. Well, <laughs> I went through and looked at that. At best, this is a course in profit and loss. It is not a degree. Okay, and, and I have given a link for you to take a look at. If you look at that, the abbreviation for this course, financial management, it says FNMBA. It's a course. It is not a degree. Like, for example, I too have a degree from MIT. Okay, you can see the uh, MIT initials. I have a degree. This doesn't mean that I can claim a master's from MIT. I just did a course in financial management. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I did a course in financial technology, fintech, in blockchain, just to find out where the technology was. And I found out that, oops, this thing is, you know, nice kind of getting your toes wet in the water. We even had to do a project. We had to do a presentation, how we would use it, blah, 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 all that stuff. Anyway, that's this is just a eight weeks, 10 weeks course. Nothing, nothing, something that you can claim as that's the MBA. All these things I got from his Wikipedia page, by the way, which I'm going to give you as a link. In the Wikipedia page, they says he claims that he has a patent. He has a patent holder of methods and systems for providing structured loan commitment transactions. Well, <laughs> again, I looked it up. 
It is just an applications to the patents and trademark office. The patent was never granted. Essentially, what it is, is, you know, uh, as an inventor myself, having had at least 50 patents, I have several more applications. You know, sometimes you just, you know, either somebody else has already done this work, so you get rejected because the prior art will show up something or they, the examiner and you can't agree on what it is that is so unique about your invention that you have to, you have to be given a patent. So these things happen. That is what happens in industry. To claim that he has a patent, patently wrong. False. Lie. Abaddam. Jhoot. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you this so that you guys know what this person is really having. And, and after that, he, he claims that he worked in a couple of banks. One of them is a sales position, guys. This is not somebody who actually looked at things to find out this is the product, this is the state, these are the revenue resources, these are the, the strengths. And I mean, no clue of macroeconomics or microeconomics. And that's what you need to have if you want to be a finance minister. Whatever knowledge that he claims to have, maybe some of it is from experience having worked in banks but we have to remember that his father was the treasurer of the Dravida Munnetra Karagam party for several years that meant that he handled the money of the party black money maybe was that what got him into some of these famous schools I don't know but I do know this there was a president called Franklin Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt had many rich people who were backing his candidacy for president and they all so when he became president they all expected something in return for their sons and daughters and so on and so forth so what fdr did his his initials are fdr uh, and uh, franklin delano roosevelt if i remember correctly what he did was he rented out a huge building in new york city and then built up fancy cubicles for each one of these french kids that he needed to he had to humor and then told them all to come in every day in the morning and when they came there he would get a stack of newspapers like from all regions of United States and everything and just say go through these things I'm thinking of a very important project for you I'll come back to you and like that he he had like I think 12 years or something like that so you get the idea this is the uh, uh, kind of clout that money has and when when you give money to somebody then these are, these are the things that you get in return you know and and i also told you about something else in a different uh, uh hangout about how mr sharp became the uh, chairman of bbc this was told by uh, sumit peer and i when we were talking about it. so if you look at some of our videos we are kind of tying up things from here and there but you get the idea this is what it is this person has nothing to do with finance, nothing to do with economics. He has no bag uh, educational grounding in any of these things. So it's laughable when he claims that he is a finance expert. Anyway, I just wanted to set that thing clear. There is also a Maridas Tamar video, basically probably analyzing what I just did. All this is from the data that he has on his site. It's not something that I, you know, had to work for. I just went a couple of steps deeper to really find out what the truth is. And the truth doesn't seem to point to anything that would say that this man is a financial expert. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications.